Today's video is brought to you by Surfshark. Safety and security online are critically important, and you can protect yourself online with Surfshark. Get 83% off and three months for free through the link in the description below. More on them in a bit. How would you like to vacation in a palace in the sky? That's exactly what Tiangong means, the name of the space station China is currently constructing in low Earth orbit. However, with about 110 cubic meters or around 4,000 cubic feet of planned habitable space, just 4% of the volume of an Olympic swimming pool, Tiangong isn't exactly designed to be a holiday home. Instead, the space provides living quarters for three Chinese astronauts or Taikonauts and room to conduct scientific research. The Tiangong space station is actually the culmination of a project spanning back three decades that has included two other functioning space stations. Started in 1992 under the title Project 921, when finished, the Tiangong space station will represent the completion of the third and final step of the Chinese manned space program, one of the most successful projects in history dedicated to the exploration of space. Step one of the CMS was to send a human being into space. Although China had been researching space flight since 1968 and launched its first satellite in 1970, by 1992 they still hadn't completed a manned mission. That September, the CMS started work on the Long March 2F, their first rocket designed to launch human beings into orbit. By 1999, the CMS had finished developing the Shenzhou-1 as well, a spacecraft whose name in Mandarin translates to the divine vessel on the heavenly river, referring to the Milky Way. It would eventually carry Taikonauts into space, but the first model was uncrewed and therefore not equipped with life support. It also didn't have the unfolding solar panels that would provide power for later Shenzhou models. Coming in at 7,600 kilograms or 17,000 pounds, roughly the weight of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Shenzhou 1 test mission launched from Inner Mongolia on November the 19th, 1999, after which it successfully orbited the Earth 14 times in 21 hours before re-entering the atmosphere. The test proved the functionality of the spacecraft's attitude control and heat shield, as well as its separation from the Long March 2F. Though it hasn't been confirmed, rumors also claim that the Shenzhou-1 carried 100 kilograms of seeds into space to record the effects they experienced in the extreme environment. Shenzhou's 2-4 followed that first flight, all of them successful, and providing data for Shenzhou-5, China's first manned space Flight. It launched on October 15, 2003, with Taikonaut Yang Luwei on board, making China the third country to send a person into space. Yang spent over 21 hours in orbit before landing safely back in Inner Mongolia. Step two was to launch a space laboratory that would allow CMS to develop docking technology for spacecraft and provide a platform for testing short-term habitation in space. CMS wasted no time with this step, and the Shenzhou-6 launched in October 2005, carrying Taikonauts Fei Zhonglong and Nai Hai Sheng on a multi-person, multi-day flight that spent four days completing 76 orbits. Then in 2011, CMS launched Tiangong-1, a kind of prototype space station. Shenzhou-8 followed, and though uncrewed, successfully completed a rendezvous and docking. Shenzhou-9 then carried three Taikonauts who successfully manually rendezvoused and docked with Tiangong-1, after which Shenzhou-10 did the same, allowing its three scientists to spend 12 days living in space, during which they conducted experiments and gave video lectures for Chinese students. Weighing 8,000 kilograms or 18,000 pounds, the Tiangong wasn't all that much bigger than the Shenzhou spacecraft itself, and at just over 10 meters long or around 35 feet, the space station was far from a roomy stay. In fact, it only had 15 cubic meters or just over 500 cubic feet of pressurized habitable volume, hardly any bigger than this room. Tiangong 1 was only occupied for about three weeks, but it did give Chinese scientists considerable insight into space habitation. In 2016, CMS followed Tiangong 1 with Tiangong 2, launched aboard the Long March 7 rocket, which was capable of heavier payloads than the previous Long March 2F. Tiangong 2 was the same size as its predecessor, but CMS decided to push the limits of its capabilities just a little bit further. First, Shenzhou 11 took two astronauts to the space station, where they spent 30 days, up to then China's record for time and space. Additionally, in 2017, the Tianzhou 1 cargo spacecraft, whose name means heavenly vessel, you see a theme with these names here, successfully docked with Tiangong 2 and completed refueling maneuvers, proving that China could successfully resupply a long-term space station. This represented the end of the second step and ushered in the third and final step, which is currently in progress. 
All right, we'll get back to today's video in just a second, but first, quick word from Surfshark. Here's something you may already be aware of. The internet's a strange place. There are people out there just looking to mess with you, maybe steal your personal information, or even just super target ads, so they're bizarrely specific to the level of extreme creepiness. Surfshark help you get rid of all of that nonsense. One great thing about Surfshark is their hack lock protection. They search online for your passwords and let you know if they've popped up somewhere, somehow. That way you change that password and boom, now you're nice and safe. And when you're feeling nice and safe, maybe you're like, oh, I'm going to watch some Netflix online. I'm to watch a rom-com or something, you know, nice. So you pop on some Netflix, you search for a good option, but you don't like any of the movies that are available. That's terrible. But Surfshark are going to fix that right after you hop on over to a different country server and boom, suddenly tons of extra streaming options. This happens all the time. I jump over to America and you get new options. It's just brilliant. If you're in America, jump on over to somewhere in Europe, you'll find that the lineup is different. Surfshark's also totally unlimited, so you can stream all you want, you can download all you want, no worries. And of course, there are no logs because it's a VPN. No one wants logs. Great support as well. 30 days money back guarantee if you don't like it. Get 83% off, three months for free at surfshark.deals forward slash mega or just follow the link in the description box below. And now, back to today's video. The Tiangong space station is already under construction, with three Chinese taikonauts commanded by Zhai Zhi Gang living on it as we record this video, which they've been doing since October 2021. The first module was launched in April 2021 on a Long March 5B rocket nicknamed Pang Wu or Fat 5, the most powerful Chinese rocket in operation and the third most powerful in the world after Falcon Heavy and the Delta IV Heavy. Called Tianhei or Harmony of the Heavens, this first module represents the core of the Tiangong space station and alone is longer than the Tiangong 1 and 2 at 16.6 meters in length or around 55 feet. It weighs 22,600 kilograms, 50,000 pounds, which is why it had to be launched aboard the Pang Wu. Compared to Tiangong 1 and 2, the Tianhe model has a little more room for the Taikonauts to stretch their legs, but not much. 50 cubic meters of living space or about 1,800 cubic feet, still less than a quarter of the size of an average apartment in Manhattan. They're small. Although they do get access to all three dimensions, this is still a tight squeeze for three roommates. This is especially true since the Taikonauts must work in the station as well. In addition to three sleeping berths, a kitchen and a toilet, the Tianhe module has computers, a scientific research station and communications equipment, as well as Wi-Fi and a robotic arm called the China Arm. It's all primarily powered by photovoltaic solar power arrays, though Tianzhou spacecraft do have to refuel the station's chemical propulsion systems and ion thrusters. Important features consider that Tiangong has twice had to dodge SpaceX Starlink satellites. Tianhe isn't the only module planned for the Tiangong space station, though. In fact, Tiangong is what's referred to as a third-generation modular space station, similar to Russia's Mir and the International Space Station, which means that it will be constructed piece by piece with individually launched modules, thereby reducing costs, improving reliability, and allowing for more specialized equipment. By the end of 2022, CMS plans to add two more modules to the space station, the Wentian and Mengtian laboratory modules. These will give scientists more room to conduct life science experiments in microgravity that wouldn't work well on Earth and study cosmic rays in the solar wind. Both of these LCMs are essentially the same size and at about 18 meters or 60 feet long, actually slightly larger than the core Tianhe module itself. Although there are no concrete plans yet, CMS may eventually expand Tiangong to six modules. China initially conceived of the Tiangong space station because they were excluded from the International Space Station, but due to the repeated success of the program, a number of other countries and agencies, including the European Space Agency, France, Sweden, Russia, and Germany, have come knocking to see if their scientists or experiments could spend time on the station in the future. That might be because, on top of all the scientific resources, life aboard Tiangong actually seems pretty comfortable if you can get past the cramped space and a suction toilet. For example, there's that Wi-Fi network and each Taikonaut has their own headphone set and microphone that works by conducting sound through the bone. This facilitates the many lectures and experiments the Taikonauts perform live for Chinese school children to inspire their interest in science. There's also a shower and one of three sleeping berths even has a small window, though I don't know how they decide who gets it. Taikonauts also have access to gym equipment and a neuromuscular electrical stimulator, both of which are essential for minimizing muscular atrophy due to the low gravity. 
The menu is impressive as well, with 120 different kinds of food available on the station, including shredded pork, kung pao chicken, pickled cabbage, and drinks like tea and juice. Most of the food is solid and made in small pieces to help with eating and digestion problems that are caused by low gravity. However, the Tiangong coolers do carry some fruits and vegetables, in addition to condiments like Szechuan sauce, an important thing to include since spaceflight can cause head congestion and a decrease in the senses of taste and smell. Most impressively, the Taikonauts can always have their food hot thanks to an onboard microwave oven, the first ever in space. So while it might not be a palace in the traditional sense, Tiangong is certainly living up to its name when it comes to space habitability, not to mention setting space flight and space construction milestones. CMS hopes that it will serve their Taikonauts for at least 10 years, possibly even 15, during which time the rotating three-person crew will advance space science, inspire and teach a generation of Chinese students, and apparently plenty of Kung Pao chicken with the world's greatest view. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this one about a space station being built, why not check out our video about the International Space Station? Actually, one of our earliest and most popular videos. I'm linking to it on the screen now. And thanks for watching.